Kyle. Thanks for dropping by. First time in the exhibit hall, by the way. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. I, you had me walk by a couple of fields and a couple of soccer balls, which is a huge accomplishment because right. I would have been a half an hour late if I stopped and started to juggle. <laughs> Even in dress shoes, I, I, can, I still have a touch. So, like we said to everybody, this is your opportunity to talk to the adult membership. Yeah. Right? So, we're going to start off nice and easy. What's your favorite memory being involved in soccer? Um, my favorite memory is actually a high school soccer memory. Uh, right. On Christine Lilly Field in Wilton, Connecticut, the FCAC Finals, which in high school was, was the local competition. Right. And right. we are a, a perennial powerhouse, or used to be, in, in Westport, Connecticut. And there's a drive up to the field. Yep. And it's a nighttime game. And in high school, you don't play a lot of nighttime games. I didn't play any, but this one. It's kind of like the drive to Wembley. Right. And you're, you're, you're going up, and, and all of a sudden, pitch black, you start to see a glow peek around the trees, and you get a glimpse at the lights. And we went up to uh, to Christine Lilly Field and beat Danbury High School in an FCAC championship. And I played in, you know, U.S. Open Cups and, and international games and World right. Cup qualifiers and, and Confederations Cup. That that still is one of my greatest memories awesome. with my buddies, with my brother, who was the goalkeeper, winning an FCAC final. Oh, awesome. Now, do you have any experience of playing in the amateur game or coaching in the amateur game? or even be an administrator. Yeah. So um, I am an amateur player right now, and uh, I've got my I've got my uh, my my card. Let me let me find it. It's in here somewhere. Nice. And I. Uh, ah, look at that, Connecticut. Yeah. I, uh, Need to maybe go back with the shaved head, <laughs> but um, so when I when I was young, the amateur game was professional to me. Right. So Brooklyn, well, Bridgeport Italians closer, but Brooklyn Italians as an Italian American, ah. that was my professional team. Right. Um, I grew up on that game. I had time when I was younger because it wasn't as intense as it is now as a youth player. Right. To supplement my education by going indoor in Bridgeport with the Latinos, indoor with, uh, with my friend Edson Buttle and his dad, the Jamaicans in Mount Vernon, and. Uh, that's culture to me. I mean, 250,000 members, we all know that the adult game is, is much bigger than that. As a federation, we need to grow the membership and make that a priority. I was going to say, perfect, perfect segue. What can USSF do to help grow the affiliated adult game? Yeah, um, let's talk about that and then talk about how we get the unaffiliated to mm -hmm. come and join. So the affiliated game, we can lower the cost of insurance or honor insurance that teams already have. Right. Um, we, can, we can make the... the the offer, obviously less expensive, but but more about playing this game for the rest of your life, right. it being an, an easy opportunity for you to find a field. There used to be handshake agreements where the adults had Sunday, the kids had Saturday, and now rainy day on a Thursday and the adults are kicked off the field for the youth. And some associations are joint and they have a good symbiotic relationship. Others are not as coordinated. And as a federation, we can help grow membership or make the, the membership better for those that are already in by building fields, building facilities so adults don't get, get, get kicked oh. off. Oh. Uh, I just got back from the Florida Classic. I mean, 2,000 players there. Right. Uh, right. Absolutely in, incredible to think. An over 65 league. I sat there and someone handed me a beer at 10 a.m., which I, which I appreciated <laughs> watching a soccer game. Uh, and I got to watch an incredible tournament, teams from all over the country, and also a few teams from Trinidad and Tobago, right. which we forgive already. Uh, and, and the adult game is culture, and, and we need to fund that, we need to grow that, and we need kids to see their parents playing the game for the rest of their life and identify kids playing in the adult right. So, Saturday morning, Orlando, you win the presidency. Sunday morning, what's your top three priorities? Uh, to make sure that I, I, I play in a game that day. Because sun, sun, Sunday, I'm sure there will be a good adult game going on. Uh, my top three priorities are um, finding out, once I get behind the curtain, where some of this leakage is. Right. Now, we have great people working for the Federation, right. for sure. 150, 160 staff. Many of them are ready, willing, and capable to do a great job for U.S. soccer. So right. I need to understand why we haven't delegated to some of these groups. I need to sit with Dan Flynn, understand the budget and where I can maybe push him a little bit mm -hmm. to use some of that surplus to supplement coaching, refing, and, and playing, right. grow the adult game, build facilities. But, but most importantly, um, I, I, I need to become the president that has the humility that says, I'm, I'm here to listen. And so I've already started these listening tours. I've been traveling all around the country and that's where my progress plan was built. 
not, not by me, I'm not the expert in all categories. Right. I, I've surrounded myself with good people, so I will continue to not only listen, but hire a technical director, create a technical staff to advise the president and the board on decisions, and, and finally integrate the entire system by involving the people that exist, hiring the ones that don't, and creating checks and balances that we need to move forward. So to finish, as an address to the to the adult state associations, why are you? Why are you? Why would? Why do you make the ideal president out of the eight candidates? Mm -hmm. Let me start with um, why why a soccer person. We have a soccer problem right now, mm -hmm. and this inflection point is about unilateral decisions made by people without the technical analysis to understand how a decision affects the entire soccer landscape. So we have, we need a soccer visionary first and foremost. Uh, I believe that wholeheartedly, and I've left my dream job because I believe it so much. Why me? Um, <clears throat> because I've played this game at every single level, and now I'm an adult player, and I think I'm uniquely positioned as someone who has created relationships that I can call on right now. People that are already growing this game in many ways that haven't been, the relationship hasn't been formalized, they haven't been invited in, and we need someone that can invite everyone back to the table to work together to grow a soccer culture. And, and, and that is the most difficult challenge for any president, and it's a challenge I'm up for and a challenge I'm capable of. Perfect. Kyle, thank you so much. Good luck in Orlando. Yeah, we'll see much. you there. All right, thanks.